Hi everyone, and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter. The first disciples were still experiencing encounters with the risen Christ, and it makes me think about how we encounter the risen Christ, or even if, if we even think about encountering him at all. It may or may not be in the shape of the person of Jesus. It, it might just be the energy that looks something like him or might look nothing like him, like when Mary mistook him for the gardener. But I think often in hindsight, we can spot that something was different about a certain moment or a conversation or some encounter that we had and that we felt peace and comfort and maybe joy in that encounter when we look back on it. You had those times? Well, our centering moment for today is this. When was the last time that you may have experienced an encounter with the risen Christ? What did it feel like? Ready? Pause. Welcome. We're so glad to see you here today. Please join me in our call to worship by reading responsibly the bold print as you see it on your screen. The gate stands open, ready for us to travel onward. But we are stubborn and fear to enter the gateway. Listen for the voice of the true shepherd. His voice will we hear and obey. Come, let us enter the gate with thanksgiving. Let us go forth confidently with songs of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Our opening hymn is O oh for a World. Let's sing with Andy. All of us fall off center occasionally, but ours is a God who constantly reaches out to us through the Spirit, the risen Christ, the teachings of Jesus, the natural world around us, and each other. Now is the time in our service when we intentionally try to realign ourselves with our center and with God's plan for our lives. We stand at the gate and peer through. We keep creating our own ways, believing that we know what is in our own best interest, and we ignore the voice of the one shepherd who will guide us 
to peace and hope. Holy God, we wander aimlessly and then wonder why we get so lost. Help us to stop and listen to the shepherd's voice. Let us place our trust in the shepherd who has never failed us, who loves and guides our lives. Even though we have wandered and have become lost, the shepherd calls to us. We can place our trust in your loving care, for we are the sheep of your pasture, blessed and given hope through the love and light of Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes to us from the book of Acts in the second chapter, but today we are reading from a translation that might be new to many of us. It is the First Nations version of the New Testament. In the introduction of this translation, it says that over 25 tribes from North America came together in its writing. And it explains, our priority has been to maintain the accuracy of the translation and its faithfulness to the intended meaning of the biblical writers within a First Nations context. It is not a word-for-word -word translation, but rather it is a thought-for-thought -thought translation, sometimes referred to as dynamic equivalence. Because it is a little different than what we are used to, we will be placing all of the text on the screen as I read. Listen for the word of God to you from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. A new family is formed. This newly formed family continued daily to learn from the 12 message bearers. They lived together in harmony, ate ceremonial meals, and prayed with one another. Great respect and awe came down upon all and the message bearers performed many powerful signs. As these new followers lived together in peace, their harmony grew stronger, and they shared all things. Many of them had a giveaway to provide for all who were in need. Each day as they gathered at the sacred lodge, with good and pure hearts, they feasted together in their homes and shared the ceremonial meal of fry bread and wine given to them by Creator sets free, Jesus. They gave honor and thanks to the Great Spirit and were respected by the people. Each day, Creator sent more people who were being set free to join with them. Continuing with the First Nations version, we will again place the whole passage on the screen. And this time I am reading from John, chapter 10, the first five verses. Listen for the Spirit's word to you. Creator sets free, told this story to the separated ones, for they were blind guides, leading the tribes of wrestles with Creator down a false path to a bad end. I speak from my heart, Creator sets free, said to the blind tribal leaders. Thieves and outlaws do not use the gate to the sheep pen, but sneak in some other way. But the shepherd uses the gate to enter, and the gatekeeper opens the way. The sheep know their shepherd's voice, for he calls each of them by name, and they follow him as he leads them in and out of the sheep pen. The sheep will not follow the voice of a stranger. They will run away, for they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Behold the Spirit's word for the church today. Thanks be to God. This reflection for today has really been hard for me to write. I've been a little distracted with our wedding reception last week, but, but also there's just so much good stuff in these two readings. So 
Actually, I ended up writing a whole thing about Bible study itself based on these two passages, which you can find in the pastor's blog on our websites, both arondequoitpc.org and southpc.org, if you're interested. Just search for pastor's blog. But for us right now, I, I want us to focus just on the gospel reading from John, where this translation gives us the imagery of something that, well, probably not many of us have a working relationship with, right? Sheep and sheep herding. I learned a lot about shepherding and God as the great shepherd from our late friend, Jean Fowler. I doubt that I will ever hear the term good shepherd again in my life without thinking of him because in his dying months, that was the image that comforted him the most. I asked him why that was so, um, and he taught me a lot about shepherding in first century Palestine. Shepherds were the lowest of the low, ritually unclean, despised by others because they lived with those animals day and night, and yet without them there could be no sacrifices at the temple. Really an imbalance in impressions uh, about people and their their role in society. The shepherds were unclean and ostracized, and yet they were the first ones visited by the angels at the birth of Jesus. Shepherding examples would have been understood by everyone in Jesus' day. So he talked about sheep a lot, and in John's gospel, he proclaims, I am the good shepherd. Now, we've all seen pictures of him as the good shepherd, right? Carrying a lamb on his shoulders. Presumably, that's the one in a hundred of the sheep, the lambs that had gotten lost. So the others were left so he could find one. <laughs> he could go after that one. Now, there are times when I have felt like that one, the one who was lost or forgotten or shoved aside the one who'd fallen into a deep pit somewhere or had a misstep and ended up someplace else. Did you ever feel like that? And somehow, Jesus came around and found me and carried me back. But I don't think that any lost sheep is going to be quiet for very long. Sheep are noisy, and my sister used to live across the road from a sheep farm. They wouldn't shut up. I mean, bah, 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 all the time. And if they were lost, no other sheep around, they would probably make a heck of a noise, calling for the other sheep, calling for their moms, just like we do, right? When we cry out for Jesus, for God, when we're in trouble. Oh, I've seen pictures of him with his shepherd's crook leading the flock somewhere. The thing is that I learned from Jean that usually the shepherd walked in the middle of the flock, not at the front as is often depicted, in the middle, right where the sheep are. And they would place the staff sideways, not carrying it up and down, they'd place it sideways, horizontal, so it could rest on the shoulders or the backs of the sheep. It helped them to feel secure. They felt the presence of the shepherd, so they would keep walking. And where the middle of the pack was going, well, the others would push ahead and the rest would follow. Now, I did a little research about the rod and staff we hear so much about. Like in the shepherd psalm, Psalm 23, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The shepherd's rod was a lot like a policeman's club, often made of oak wood and with a knob at the end of it. And into the knob, sometimes uh, nails were driven so as to make it a better weapon. It was very useful for protection. No shepherd would be without it. It was no doubt that the rod that David used in protecting his sheep from the wild animals was something like that. And it's out, talked about in First Samuel. So with the rod, we find Jesus protecting the flock. The shepherd's staff, on the other hand, was the one that we often think of with the crook at the end of it. Five, six, sometimes even seven feet tall. It's used like Western 
people today would use a cane or a walking stick. Uh, and it was also useful for protection, but the crook itself could help lift the sheep by the head. Sheep would fall and down a ways down into a crevice and couldn't get out. Now, John was tells us kind of um, the most important thing of all, I think, and Jean really drove this home to me as well. It's not just that the shepherds choose the sheep. It's that the sheep, in a way, choose the shepherd. What I mean is, if it's a large flock, and sometimes they could have up to, you know, 1,200 sheep, can you imagine? If it's a large flock, there would be multiple shepherds. And sheep would respond to one shepherd's voice over all the others. The sheep chose their shepherd. They bonded with that one shepherd. And if someone else were calling to them, they not only wouldn't come, but they might even be frightened and run away from that person. Other people trying to steal sheep, sheep stealers, they would be the ones to break through the fencing and try to get the sheep to follow them. I mean, if you have 1,200 sheep, I, I, I don't think you're going to miss 10 or 20, right? Well, wrong. If you have good shepherds, they'd know. But those are the thieves that are represented and talked about in Scripture. But the shepherd always comes through the gate, bringing the whole flock together. The shepherd unites the flock. We all go in through the same gate. How does that relate to you with Jesus and with your faith? I think there are times in our lives when we get caught up listening to other voices, other shepherds, if you will, those trying to lure us into their flock, maybe, whether it's a religious flock or um, a flock of those who find fault with everything or uh, maybe it's a flock that only values consumerism or escapism. Or a flock of people who doubt everything. Um, conspiracy theorists, they are their own flock, with QAnon as their shepherd. Sometimes we follow them for a while, until we realize that we're separated and alone, or maybe we get scared. Now we look around and suddenly realize that we are estranged from those we love, maybe. Or maybe we fall down into a deep hole of addiction or mental illness. And something happens, some crisis, and we cry out like, ah, 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 ah. And the Good Shepherd comes and rescues us. God is there, placing us right back inside the safety of the sheepfold right? You've been there, haven't you? I have. I think that part of what's hard for us is that we are all members of different sub flocks, if you will. Uh, a term I'm inventing, but I think you'll see what I mean. It's like we have multiple sub flock memberships. Every community that we are a part of is like a flock. Uh, we're part of the choir or the bell choir or a community band. Our group of people at work or a neighborhood association or just the people who live next door. Or the PTA or a group that carpools together. Maybe it's a formal group like Kiwanis or Rotary or you know, maybe it's uh, some community book group or an act of faith or the Zumba or yoga class at the Y. We form community. They are all their own flocks in a way. And we are part of those communities, aren't we? We are supposed to be. We should be. Community is important. But the primary place where we are rooted is in our family, usually. That's the primary flock, the primary identifier, both of us, for us, we see ourselves as connected to family, but also for people who look at us from the outside, they identify the family. And within the family, there are shepherds and shepherdesses, those who work to keep us safe, 
those who come after us when we've lost our way. That's what the Acts reading is about, by the way, how being together in church is like being together as a family. We all take care of each other. We, we have to talk together and have ritual meals together. But the only one who is able to shepherd us 100% of the time is the good shepherd, the perfect shepherd, God, Jesus. The flock I, finds, finds its identity in him. And in our case, as human beings and not sheep, Jesus uses us to be shepherds for others as well. We are the ones who are responsible for carrying his voice, his teachings, his presence into the world because some sheep are looking, searching, yearning to find their flock, to hear that their, their shepherd's voice, and we are the only way that they might hear it. We are the way that the great shepherd calls to people who have not yet developed the ears to recognize the voice of the risen Christ. I read this article. It talks about how scientists have proven that newborns recognize their mother's voice as soon as they leave the womb. They've been hearing it along with the heartbeat for months. So they bond immediately with their mother's and often their father's voice. So not to stretch this analogy too far, but when we are born again in the spirit, when we emerge as newborns in our faith, when we are finally able to claim that we follow the Prince of Peace, for example, we too will recognize his voice immediately. It resonates within us. It makes sense to us. We can, we can hear it. For those who have yet to be born of the Spirit, who have yet to experience that resonance with his teachings because they haven't been exposed to his teachings. They can't recognize his voice. It may be there, but they won't recognize it for what it is yet. So we, my friends, are both the shepherd and the sheep in this world. Sheep being shepherded by the spirit of the risen Christ and used by him to reach out to others to help them recognize his presence in the world. Scripture says, each day they gathered at the sacred lodge. With good and pure hearts, they feasted together in their homes and shared the ceremonial meal of fry bread and wine given to them by Creator Sets Free. They gave honor and thanks to the Great Spirit and were respected by the people. Each day, Creator sent more people who were being set free to join with them. They come because we share the message of who he is. Shepherds and sheep. We are both. May we have the strength, the devotion, the commitment, and the faith to be what we are called to be in the world, sheep and shepherds. Amen. So shepherds come in different shapes and sizes. Sometimes we are in the role of shepherds without even knowing it. We call people by name. We invite them to become part of the flock of those who are loved by their creator God. Whatever you can give, your time, your money, your prayers, supports the work of this church in creating and supporting those groups through our ministries. It enables us to become the shepherds. Please give generously.
and so we pray together. You call us to be your people, the sheep of your flock, yet your flock keeps growing as others hear your name and enter through the gate of your sheepfold. We offer these gifts to your use and dedicate them to our own shepherd's work. Bless them and all the lives they will touch, we ask. Amen. God is calling through the whisper of the Spirit's deepest sighs the thrill of sudden beauties that can catch us by surprise. Flash of lightning, crash of thunder, rush of stillness, rush of wonder. God is calling, can you hear? God is calling, can you hear? God is calling through the voices of our neighbors, urgent through their longing for redemption and for rescue from despair. Place of hurt or face of meeting, strident cry or silent bleeding. God is calling, can you hear? God is calling, can you sublime and human hearts, through the hymns of earth and angels, and the carols of our hearts, lift of joy and gift of singing, days and nights our praises bringing, God is calling and we hear, God is calling and we As we begin our prayer time today, I invite you to think of those people who have shepherded you, who are shepherding you, those people that you are trying to reach out to, to shepherd in some way, to guide, to mentor, to lead. And as you do that, to think of how Jesus has sent those people to you and has sent you to those others, as we are sheep and shepherds, both. Let us pray. O Holy One, you are the Great Shepherd. You find us when we have separated ourselves from the flock, you find us when we are scared and broken, when we're trapped, when we've fallen into a pit. And always you bring us back home to your sheepfold, <laughs> to your place where we can learn about you and live in your presence. For you take care of us, you give us, you lead us to the pastures where we can eat, you lead us to the the cool waters, the still waters where we can drink. You restore our souls. On this day when we are so mindful of world events and national events and events in our own communities and perhaps in our own families where there is trouble, where there might be violence, where there's discord, we ask you to enter, to come and bring your peace, bring your presence, speak your words through us that they may resonate with others who are hearing them, so that when they are born in the spirit, they will be able to recognize your voice because they've heard it inside them already. We ask your blessings upon 
our family and friends. But we also ask your blessings upon ourselves. Help us to be all that you would have us be. Show us how to be the shepherds of the people you put us in contact with. And help us to remember to turn to you as the Good Shepherd, and therein to find the comfort that mm, passes all understanding. For we pray this and all prayers in the name of the One who is our Shepherd and who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The shepherd never forgets the sheep. He or she is forever faithful. Our closing hymn now sings of that faith. Let's join Andy as we sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Andy. shepherds. We're both. What are you going to do about it? 
pretend it doesn't exist? Well, that's not going to work. We have to jump into it and say, okay, show me how to be the kind of shepherd you would have me be. Put me where you want me. Show me what to do. Right? All right. I hope today spoke to you and you found words of encouragement and love here. Words of light. Words of hope and possibility. I invite us all now to go with God and to walk with Jesus. Invite him to be the good shepherd in our lives and dance with the Spirit. And let the people of God say, Amen. Stick around for a nice postlude today. We'll catch you next time. Until then, be safe, be well, God bless. Take care and bye for now. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us today. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here, and we are glad that you chose to worship with us. We're grateful for your prayerful support of our ministry. We're a small congregation of about 50 members in upstate New York, and since the COVID shutdown, we are exploring new ways to be the church in the 21st century. If you're watching this, we already think of you as part of us, and we would love to hear from you because all of us are united by the spirit of the living and loving God. Should you find yourself in the Rochester, New York area, we would welcome you to worship with us in person. Please check our website calendar for our location and an interactive map. If you would like us to pray for you, please send those joys or concerns to me through our website, which is noted at the end of this video. The nice thing about online worship is that we can access it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you wake up in the night or you've had a hard day at work, if the kids keep you going and your only alone time is when they take a nap, come, pray with us, sing, and hear a reflection. God knows no time and distance. Our church is open 24-7 online. Occasionally, we have other services and reflections that we post online as well. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Irondequoit Presbyterian Church. If you are in a position to help support us financially, your gifts may be sent to us as seen on your screen. We hope that you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you back here again. Just remember, Irondequoit is where the land meets the water, and Irondequoit Presbyterian Church is where our faith meets new life. Okay, God bless, and bye for now.